If you think that anime and media created to appeal to otakus provides an accurate depiction of Asian culture and people, honey, you've got a big storm coming. <laughs> and to me... Alright, hi fairies, welcome back to another internet archaeology. So today's video we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic. The topic of this video is going to be lollies. Please call for help. I initially had the idea to do this video when I retweeted something on Twitter. It was a meme about lollies, but I actually asked people, you know, what are their opinions on it and maybe should I do a video? And a lot of people were interested in seeing a video on this topic, so... So here I am. If you're new here, Internet Archaeology is basically a chit chat get ready with me style video where we look at the fossil record of the internet and try and carbon date a few trends. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Put y'all seatbelts on. So when I first made that post on Twitter, a few people in the comments or the replies or whatever were basically saying, what are lollies? So let's begin with actually explaining what are lollies and lollycon. Let's define those two words. Now the exact meaning and definition of these words is as controversial and debated as the actual subject matter itself, but the most common agreed upon definition is that lolly is basically an aesthetic or art style typically found within anime related material that is centered around youthful and pubescent girls. This happens in every video. Lolly can be not only an art style and something within media, but it can also be an aesthetic of clothing and fashion. Okay, so it's, you know, the cutesy cutesy kind of art style. So that's just the definition of lolly itself. And you know, that in and of itself doesn't really sound like a big deal. But the real reason we're gathered here today is not simply that. We're gonna talk about something called lolly con. Lolly con is basically a community on the internet who bear some kind of sexual attraction or fetishization of the lolly art style and lollies. Wait a damn minute. And I'm sure a few of you have already kind of thought to yourself, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Because it's an art style that's main characteristic is individuals that look like children. If you're wondering that what I'm trying to say is there is a community of people, a very large group of people on the internet that is completely dedicated towards the creation, creation and distribution of what is basically CP, then you are correct. That is exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's enough internet for today. And this is actually a much more prolific problem than people think. One of the main things that kind of inspired me to make this video was a poll I saw on a subreddit for Genshin Impact. For those of you that don't know, Genshin Impact is a very popular new game. It was made by Chinese game developer Mihoyo. So there was a poll on one of their NSFW hentai servers, r slash Genshin Impact hentai. Oh lord. This poll basically asked the entirety of the subreddit if they believe they should ban NSFW artwork of characters that are pretty much depictions of minors. While the answer to that question may be extremely obvious to us, 4.8 thousand people said yes and 3.8 thousand said no. That's enough internet for today, which means the ban passed under a slim margin of around 20%. Almost 4,000 people of the 8,000 that voted chose no. <laughs> That is one very, very real and clear example of this lollycon community and how it kind of exists within other communities. And what's even more interesting is the comments of that poll are very, are pretty much a goldmine if you're interested in the psychology and what exactly goes on in these people's heads. What kind of rhetoric are they using to justify their no vote? Because the girls were really, really fighting. They were fiercely debating this topic. So let's take a look, shall we? Because you'll find that some of the most incriminating things come out when you allow them to speak freely. It seemed that the main excuse that a lot of people were using was the phrase, it's just drawings, it's just artwork. And while objectively, yes, they are just drawings, the thing is those drawings attract the attention of certain individuals and this community. Now, in the case of Genshin Impact specifically, that game is rated Peggy 12, which means it's a game that may have a large amount of adolescents and minors playing it. And I'm sure that you can imagine how it certainly would not be a very good thing if the community were to be saturated with predatory individuals. You're literally creating a fox in the hen house kind of situation. Why why is it that this lollycon community is obsessed with media that is also simultaneously popular with youth? I don't really think that's a coincidence. And that's the main issue. That's what a lot of people are rightfully concerned about. And if you look at a lot of the rhetoric that was taking place in those comment sections, and I'm sure in a lot of other places of the internet, they're debating the lewd and risque nature of these pieces as opposed to the audience that they're catered for. And it's a very common occurrence for people attempting to justify that stuff to go through all these mental and rhetorical gymnastics to try and get you to 
agree with them, when in reality they're purposefully dodging the point. It's not about debating the nature of modern art or implying some kind of cultural difference that comes from the East. And we'll get into that in a second because I have some opinions about that. The tea is exceptionally good today. It doesn't take the mind of a mastermind. It's not rocket science to figure out how this stuff can be a problem. It functions in a very parasitic way. And while I keep talking about Genshin Impact, in this specific case, just know that this, that's our kind of our case study here. Because this group of people, the Lollicons, they move from fandom to fandom. It's kind of a parasitic relationship where they kind of destroy that fandom and it kind of becomes taboo and it becomes associated with certain things and then they move to the next one. So in a way it sucks because the developer Mahoyo, the artist that made the characters, all that, you can't really blame them for the way people take their work and use it out of con out of context and corrupt its meaning. Because as I said, the game itself is not explicit at all. It's kind of similar in a way how the brony community made something as innocent as My Little Pony a far more complex topic. It becomes taboo by association. It's so innocent in nature that it's actually the last place you'd think to look to find this kind of stuff. It's the perfect host for the lollicon parasite to exist within. It seems that the strategy here is to create an atmosphere of faux naivete and innocence. All those people who voted no, that's why a majority of them are saying, oh, it's just artwork. It's just artwork of this Peggy 12 game for 12 year olds. And the more you think about it, the more kind of gaslighty and manipulative that becomes. Because number one, that's not the main reason why people are upset with it. And secondly, that's not the main reason why the lollicon people like it. Do you think people are having this argument because they actually care about Genshin Impact in the game? Or is it because there's something else going on there? It's so sick and twisted. As I said before, these people jump from fandom to fandom, any place where they can masquerade behind the illusion that they're just interested in the fan art of the game. For every supply, there's always a demand. And the people that are really hurt by that rhetoric in the end, once people within the mainstream and the larger parts of the community realize what's going on, they may view the source material in a distasteful way, but that perception is not shaped by the actual artist that created it, but shaped by the people that distorted its meaning. I hope you can see how that's actually very, very parasitic. You know, these people jump from one community, one fandom to the next, any place where they can get away with this behavior, but in the process of doing so, they end up completely destroying the public reception of the piece. And another thing I saw a concerning amount of people bringing up was they were basically saying that that's just how people in Asia look. I kid you not, I actually got in an argument with someone over this and they were trying to tell me that this character was at least 24. Bitch, is you blind? What the fuck is going on in here on this day? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. <laughs> And to me, nothing screams Basement Dweller more than that. If you think that anime and media created to appeal to otakus provides an accurate depiction of Asian culture and people, please go outside. <laughs> Not yet. Go! I feel like I bring this up in almost every other video, but I feel like the context always requires it. I'm half Asian and I grew up in a Tagalog speaking household, so I feel like I'm a little bit qualified to speak on this. And while I am slightly flattered that a lot of people think we Asians are just immune to aging and we stay naturally young like the vampire children from the Voltori, that simply isn't true. Asia is not some magical wonderland where all your sick, twisted fantasies can come true. Period! The fuck? And I noticed that a common strategy amongst the people that do use this in their rhetoric, why a lot of people bring up cultural differences is to create a situation where if you disagree with them, they paint you as being racist or bigoted against Asian culture, when in reality there simply are no cultural differences that would make that anything less than not okay. How can I be ignorant and bigoted about my own culture? It doesn't really make sense. But that's the thing about this rhetoric, it just doesn't make sense. And not only that, but I think the way people bring the race card into it, it's kind of a little bit unnecessary. I actually think it's not only unnecessary, but sometimes quite offensive when people bring up Asian culture as a means to justify their attraction towards children. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way, like really the wrong way. Fucking all right, lash is done off camera. You already know the drill. But the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit more of a unique perspective. As I said from the beginning, Lolly is kind of almost an art style. Now, I am very old and crusty, so I was around back when DeviantArt and Tumblr were kind of exploding popularity, and there was this huge, this huge explosion in digital artists. It felt like everyone was getting a Wacom tablet that year for their birthday. I did. That was my big present when I was turning 16, a Wacom Intuos medium tablet. Do I have it? I think it's on the floor somewhere. I don't know where it is. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because artistic 
Lyrically, Lolly is actually quite similar to another art style very popular amongst beginners, known as chibi. One thing that a lot of people used to do is they used to make these bases, those generic DeviantArt base body things that you just draw clothes and hair on top of. And I'm not saying that Lolly is an easier art style, but the thing is, I feel like it's very fair to say that certain elements that are core in many other art styles, you don't have to focus on as heavily if you are doing something in the Lolly style. For example, anatomy, like muscular anatomy. If you were to compare the art style of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures versus Genshin Impact, one requires an extremely fine-tuned perception of anatomy, whereas the other one you can get away with not knowing every single muscle in the body. Art styles such as Lolly are very beginner-friendly because they allow individuals to experiment with other very important aspects of style, such as color, shading. It's one of the best starting places, in my opinion, if you're a person that wants to develop your artistic skills in that regard. I feel like there was this kind of niche community of people that really wanted to become animators or storyboard artists. Oh my god, this is taking me back. Pretty much all throughout high school, my friend group was people who wanted to do animation. And the thing is, it really does highlight the difference between the skills necessary to be an animation artist or a person involved in the creation of animated works, as opposed to just an artist. Because the thing is, animation and digital art like that can actually be quite scientific in a way. There are certain core concepts and principles you just need to have down. Artistic style in that regard is not just doing whatever you want. It's taking very established principles and interpreting them your own unique way. That's why I just said it's more of a little bit of a science because there is a learning curve and an aspect that goes into it. That's why I feel like it's such a bad situation going on with this because Lolly can actually be a very valuable tool for a lot of developing artists. Even though my artwork now looks nothing like Lolly, in fact, the complete opposite. <laughs> Judge me. Judge me. That's for the that's for the art that doesn't make it into the merch store. Even though my work is pretty much the stylistic antithesis of Lolly's, I will no doubt acknowledge that it's been a really rocky journey. Learning the male anatomy like that is hard. You can't expect to learn it overnight. And it, honestly, for some people, it may even be optional because some people don't don't even want to draw that kind of stuff. Keeping that in mind, art styles like Lolly, Chibi, whatever you want to call it, that family of art styles is perfectly valid. What I'm trying to say is I don't feel like it's very fair to assume that every single person within a specific community, in this case Genshin Impact, is going to be a lollicon because while it is certainly a growing problem that has caused a lot of people to be concerned, I don't feel like it's very fair to say that these kind of character designs are by default problematic. I feel like we really have to avoid falling into that logic. That's like trying to ban kids from acting in movies out of fear that some predatory individuals will be nasty with it. The logic within that is understandable, but I don't really feel like it's a clean solution to an already messy problem. And the artists that do create NSFW artwork using this style, they kind of ruin it for everyone, even for the people that do just want to draw characters that are childish and kind of chibi in nature. That's why I don't really think it's completely fair to simply attack Lolly as an art style. Because as I highlighted at the beginning of the video, Lolly is an art style and aesthetic, whereas Lolly Con are the problem. I really do feel that they're taking an art style, not only an art style, but just various fandoms, popular characters, they're taking all these things and they're using it as a mask. But as a result of them doing so, now the subject has become become extremely taboo via that association. That's why this is such a sticky situation, because the association with possibly one of the most taboo things, just that association is enough for people to completely want to stay away from things that have just been completely ruined. All right, and I think the fragrance I'm gonna be wearing tonight, because what's the point of looking good if you don't smell good? The last time I gave a little bit more of an expensive fragrance recommendation, so this time I'm gonna do a cheap one. Tonight for my adventurous time indoors, I'm gonna be wearing Bath & Body Works Bonfire Bash. I got this on super clearance, so it was only a few dollars. I am also definitely a perfume snob, so Bath & Body Works quality to me has always been a little bit dodgy, but I can definitely recommend this one because it is so strong. If you spray this on your shirt or in your hair, you will smell it like seven hours later. And the smell, ugh, it's pretty much like a little bit of a sweeter version of By the Fireplace by Replica. This is a fall scent, so you can only really find it there during the fall, late summer months, but you can find it on eBay. Mm, it smells like a sexy lumberjack. I love it. And I think with that, this video comes to a close. I really hope you did enjoy. I hope you found this intellectually stimulating, and I hope you learned something new. If you're new here, I'll always encourage you to subscribe and leave a comment. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. It's so sick and twisted.